Hey friends, and welcome back to a Friday at the Bike Shop. It's actually not Friday, it's Sunday evening because we are having a bit of a different program this week, but you are gonna be seeing this on Friday. Didn't crash, way to go. That's an improvement from yesterday. But first off, before we start off on this vlog, I would like to give a shout out to Mike, my friend from the Crank Revolution Group Rides for giving us two bags of coffee, thank you very much, as well as Scotty and Mr. Chris Chioto from the barbershop down the road for giving us another bag of coffee. You guys are very much appreciated. You're keeping us alive and awake during this colder, slower winter season. And so, thank you very much. So for many of you who are well versed in the cycling world and you've been following cycling news, you know that the cycling industry is struggling right now. Lots of things in the industry, including consumer direct bikes, just the lack of consumers interest in cycling, among other trends have basically given us a very difficult season to work with. And while many YouTube channels will be talking about how the local bike shop is dying or the industry is dead, why don't we talk about the birth of our bike shop and how the Crank Revolution bike shop came to be. years ago. 10 years, yeah, we're in the similar timeline. <laughs> the term, the name Crank Revolution came about before my cross country bike tour. I remember us trying to do that dictionary thing for a while where you just flip random pages and that wasn't working at all. We were like, but we need I, that something. Was, that was your technique. I, I think uh, I, I put yes, I had to use bike that terms band, on yes. two different sides. Crank Revolution, if anyone doesn't know, that is the crank is where the pedals are and Revolution would be it pedaling. And so it's, you know, pedaling, it's moving forward. It's, it's a very, you know, very simple analogy for that. Well, and the thing for me too is the word revolution was the first one that I remembered thinking, yes, it has to have that. Not because I like the word revolution as much as we want to change like we both were at a corporate uh, bike shop where we couldn't always do what we wanted to do for customers it was a lot of frustrating corporate things involved so we really wanted to change how we do it so the revolution of what a bike shop should be is something we definitely yeah. matched on and then it was like okay wheel revolution saddle revolution like there's only so many parts on a bike i mean handlebar tape revolution yes. obviously is where we should have stuck but on the advice of council i'd like to take the fifth we met at Performance Bike Schaumburg in the service area. <laughs> yes, locationally, right? that is, that's locationally, where it was. that was exactly yes. where it was. So it's 155 West Golf Road, Schaumburg, Illinois, 60192. Yeah. I don't remember the phone number there anymore. No, I, I used don't to either. have all of that. From my perspective, uh, so it was another you know, normal day where I was working on bikes. This guy came in and he was like, hey, I've been riding more with my daughter and I don't know how to fix a flat. Yeah. I'm nervous about that. And I was like, oh, okay, cool, we're slow. So yeah, and I like, grabbed his bike, put it up in the stands, like, cool, this is how you do it. And then like, now it's your turn. Yeah, hey, actually ahead. made me do it, which is great. And then you got your hands on. And so yeah, it is, it's funny to think that, yes, we now own a bike shop. Yeah. 10 years later? Is it 10? Yes. It's close. Almost 10 years. Almost 10 yeah. years. We met on what I would hope that you would consider to be like a good bike shop interaction. Yeah, to meet TC and not only watch and be like, all right, I'm gonna observe this, I'm gonna figure it out, and then him to actually go, okay, here's a stand, go for it. I think that's what we've really taken here too with clinics and classes is teaching riders is important. Yeah, and like building community, giving people the tools, giving people the confidence, the knowledge to be self-sufficient, to be able to feel more comfortable and to ride more, you know, that ride more bikes. If you're more comfortable, if you're more confident yeah. in what you're doing, it's a lot easier to go further to, you know, do more with it, so. Well, we, we've had customers too where we've shown them how to do something like, well, doesn't that make you lose money? I don't think so because no. what I kind of want every rider to do is to be confident that they get stuck in the middle of a forest preserve or on a ride, that they have a way to at least fix their bike enough to, to get back yeah. out or get back home. You know, so yeah, we might lose a little bit teaching everyone how to change their own tire and inner tube, but that's just something that every cyclist should know how to do. It's just good uh, rider stewardship. One of, one of my favorite things, and my, like a lot of my riders who, yes, I've taught them X, Y, and Z how to do a lot, you know, wheel building classes, <laughs> yeah. all of this. And it's the peeking behind the curtain to see, uh, you know, the Wizard of Oz. And it's like, oh, you yeah. know, leave that where it is. If you learn how to build a wheel, that doesn't mean that you're gonna build a second wheel, 10th wheel, a 15th wheel. Oh yeah. You might just build one because it's a rough process and takes a long time to be comfortable and confident doing it. That's why flat fixes being $10 for me, a lot of my guys are like, All right, sure, for $10, I will gladly let someone else do that for me. 2017, I moved out to Utah and then 2019, I moved back to open the bike shop. That was the big thing then. I was working for Specialized um, as a retail care rep, I think was my like official term, but uh, I mean, uh, we did a lot in that office. Uh, managing some global allocation of all warranty parts and dealing with massive spreadsheets. Lots of synergy. 
And it was kind of weird the conversation we had because we'd always joked about opening. It was like one conversation, and then you were already putting in like your two weeks. Well, it was so, like, are we doing it? Yes, we're doing uh, yeah, it. And that then was the. So you called me on New Year's Day, and it was like, hey man, performance is closing. We had worked so hard and built such a community yeah. there at that store. It made sense. Like, we were bringing customers from one place to another place. Really. I also knew that the closest specialized retailer to this exact oh, location yeah. that we are had been cut. They were no longer a specialized retailer, so I knew that there was kind of a hole, kind of an opening of where we could fit in. I mean, I had been out to Utah. I had been successful in terms of like, I had packed up my car, moved across the country. I didn't have anything to prove to anybody. I, I had done it. I had been established and this was the next adventure was to move back into my mom's basement <laughs> which we both ended up doing with it's the, the shop. only way to like a to fund this and yeah not, to and fund and afford massive it. amounts of debt and yeah that. exactly oh. and for me it was one of those things is i don't want to get into all the boring type of things i did digital data vault to working a car dealership selling cars i uh, know but i spent most of my time doing kid science programming and always doing big exciting science shows for people so that was really fun for me and i just kept going from place to place and yeah you know you go to corporate jobs and you do things and you make more money but it wasn't really gratifying We've never really thought we were a retail store, really, because no. like the stack it high and watch it fly is such an old mode of retail anywhere. For us being able to set up, like we're setting up a rental site now where it doesn't matter e-bikes or whatever, you can jump on and you can actually rent out a bike for the day. If it snows out, take an awesome fat bike out. We have a membership now that it's not just gonna be like a club membership, but not only does discounts, but also gives you a tune-up and also gives you access to classes. And also you can take out bikes every week as demos. And so what's it's always fun when you talk about like anything in the bike industry and you're trying to create a community hub that no matter how you want to ride or how you want to express yourself with a bicycle, we can help. You using our collective knowledge and our collective passions to really kind of help pull people more into this, get people more active and more out there. Yeah, and that's the big change because you know what, the, the whole bike industry is changing once again. So it's like, it changes, we opened, pandemic, changing again, but you know what, it's, it's fun. And we've got so many great riders and so many great stories. I hope you guys enjoyed that little chat with TC and Jeremy, the two owners here. Of course, it's been a tough couple of years. It's going to be a tough year ahead, but it's been an awesome year working with you guys. We've got so many new people on new bikes. We've gotten so many old bikes restored so that people can ride them. And for that reason, we want to thank... Make it rain! I am not cleaning that up. Bike shops are where you go. What's the saying? Oh, if you want to be a millionaire, uh, start with 10 yes. and open a bike shop, then you'll get down to one.